Dr. Scott, where is he? I know he's here. Okay, sorry. Way back, straight back. Okay, because you normally sit over here, so you're messing with me because you moved seats this morning. But he's got all of his kids with him, his well-behaved, awesome children with him, all five of them, and an amazing wife. And uh, because you can't have all that without an amazing wife. And, uh, and so he, his new book is called Boot Camp, and it's a beginner's guide to spiritual warfare. Okay, this is, I think, like should be required reading of everybody. Because, see, you need to know about spiritual warfare. Don't go into it if you don't know what you're doing. Or guess what? Weapons that are being formed against you will get you. Okay, you can quote the scripture, but if you don't know what you're doing, you got to be careful. So this is a a beginner's guide to because you're going to need to know how to deal with that. And uh, and then in regards to this particular book, he came to ordination, met my daughter, Charity. Charity is an author coach and she helps get a book from here into your hand in about 120 days. If you'll cooperate and do your homework, you'll have it in your hand. Right, Maxie? Okay, hers went to be edited last night, which is like so exciting. And um, she, you know, it's like she's been wanting to write a book for whatever, you know, for forever and ever and ever. And then Scott probably never even thought about a book, maybe a medical book, but but not a book book for Jesus, you know. And and then all of a sudden, boom, he gets he gets ordained, does this, all these people are getting healed, he gets his job position back at the hospital supernaturally, supernaturally. And, uh, and then this happened and that happened and now he's got a book out written by somebody really famous, the foreword. It's really awesome. <laughs> and, um, but if you're interested in, in writing a book, many of you in here have an urge to write a book. How many of you feel led to, that you're to write a book? Okay. Keep your hand up if you have written it and it's published. Okay, did you see, I think we have two that are, their hands are still, three of their hands are still up. Out of all of those that went up. Okay, I tell you what, I never thought I would ever write a book, much less 27. That's amazing. You know, dumb, stupid, and retarded, never able to read or write is now the author of 27 books. I'm surprised, but so is my brother. I just sent him like five that I just did, and his wife is eating them up like crazy. And uh, it's so cute because his wife contacted me. She goes, he thinks I'm crazy, but you know I'm not. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, I know. But he'll eventually get over there and whatever. But, But the thing is, I never thought I would ever write a book. Now, let me tell you what. God has a book on the inside of you that can go around the world through Amazon, e reader, et cetera, that God's gonna use to change people's lives. I don't want you to go to, when you go to heaven, to be held accountable to all the books that you didn't write because you were thinking who wouldn't read it and their lives, never, the people's lives never got touched. Bob Whitaker Sr., Bob Jr. now is a good, they're all good friends. I've kind of grown up with them over the last 30 years. He says, if you ever put your testimony in a book, I, I want it. Now, it's like the number two publisher in the world. And I went, thank you very much. I went back to my, my hotel room, laughed out loud, I almost spit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. You know, like my, me a book, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And um, it's called Healing the Heart. And uh, many of you have read it. Many of you, and either, either here or online, have read it, and it's changed your life. And people have come up to me and says, I thought I was the only one. And, and that's why I put so much emphasis on healing of the heart, healing broken heart syndrome, healing the wounded soul, and just a variety of other situations like that. And uh, love again, live again. You know, you, you're so devastated. The last thing you want to do is, is even think about getting married again because you were so hurt. Okay. And God wants to go in, you know, and heal your heart and totally completely heal you. And he's done that to me. It's just so amazing uh, what has happened. And that's why I put such an emphasis on on that. But if I hadn't written that 500,000, you know, which each book is read by 12 people, average of 12 people, that's 6 million people whose lives have been touched because of that book. Okay. So I want to encourage you to write the book. God wants you to write it. The enemy doesn't. Hmm. 
Who are you listening to? Well, who am I to write a book? You're a child of God and God is telling you to do it. Obviously, there's a reason. Some of you are going to be able to travel with it. Some of you not. Robbie Sugar, she came and she got ordained. I met her. She's in Merkle, Texas, if you haven't heard of it. Don't look for it on the map. It's that small. Okay, it's in West Texas. Went out to their church. Uh, Robbie came in, did the, did the uh, ordination and stuff like that. Met with Charity. And within two years, she now has just this week released her sixth book. And Merkel, Texas, she's a grandma, a wife, and she does not travel and promote the book, but she promotes the book and it's selling thousands of them. And she doesn't even leave Merkel. Well, I don't have a traveling ministry. You do through Facebook. You can go around the world through Instagram, you know, and, and put your name out there. I'm just, this is not about self-promotion, in the, but it, what it's about is the messages in Robbie's book, the message that's in Dr. Scott's book, the messages that are in mine, they're getting out. And they're setting people free. Amen. And that's, what's, that's what it's all about, is teaching, training, equipping. And my, one of, let's see, this is my latest book that just came out uh, earlier this year, January the 11th, technically. It's called Nine Plus. This is taking the limits off of God, but taking the limits off your gifting. This is about the nine gifts of spirit, but don't limit it. My opinion, Caleb has the gift of flagging. Susan, the gift of worship. I don't have either one of those. I can worship, but not lead worship. You know, prophetic art, Jamie Lynn Wallnow. Wow, she's amazing in prophetic art. And that's a gift of God. But don't limit yourself to nine. There's a gift of IT, AKA computers. You know, boom, you just sit down and you know how to do a computer. I know how to spell computer. <laughs> you know, and my cell phone is my computer, which goes around the world. Uh, which is like really awesome. But this is nine plus and it will really in I encourage you to really develop because see, nine gifts are you can have three and not have nine. Really? Christmas time, you, you're, you get presents from your parents. He's, there's nine under the tree. Are you going to open up three and say, that's enough? No, said no child, no matter how old this child is, you know? And so we, the thing is, God has so much more. We haven't even tapped into it. And so if nothing else, you need to learn how to do the discerning of spirits. You know, I think that's uh, Kenan's latest book is really learning how to discern what is of God, what's not God. And my, my great way of determining it is medically you have three brains. That's medically, not sci-fi. Okay, you're going, I have three brains? You have three brains. You have brain cells here. You have brain cells here. You have brain cells here in your spirit man. Okay? They all need to line up. You know that ugh, feeling? That's your brain telling you, don't do it. And in here, you go, oh, oh, yes. And your gut says, no. And, to, and he's like, he's got, but he's got a job. He's got a car, okay? So the brain says yes, the heart goes mush, and the spirit man says no. They all need to line, so that's a really good example, okay? And then should I buy this house? Should I move over here? Should I do this? Should I leave where I'm at to move where I need to go? And then you, then you say, okay, head-wise, is this a good decision? Heart-wise, is it a good decision? What about here? Okay, and so they all need to be in alignment. When they're in alignment, then you're not going to have any problems. If they're not in alignment, you are opening yourself up to problems. And that's a form of discerning of spirits, etc. And what God wants to do is he wants to raise you up so that you can look at something and go, uh -huh, no. Okay.